It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So I feel like it's been a little while since I've sat down with you guys and given you some really solid advice. They're usually interwoven throughout all of my videos, especially my pricing guides, but today I'm going to focus on talking to you guys about what is a stock versus a custom order. This is something that I put at the end of most of my videos where I talk about how I would charge differently for a custom order versus a stock order and some of you are a little bit confused about what that means and some of you maybe know what it is but are seeking more advice on what to do for a stock order. So bakeries can be run in two different ways but usually they choose a combination of the two. So for example you can be a bakery that is only going to offer custom orders and I would say that normally most home baking businesses run in this manner or you might be a bakery that only offers stock orders so maybe you're more of a bakery that focuses on the breads and the pastries and you only have stock and once you run out of that stock you don't make any more. Now I will say that most of the time especially where I live I see a hybrid of the two. So I see bakeries that offer custom orders as well as stock orders. But before I get ahead of myself we're gonna go point by point over everything that I have to say about custom versus stock orders. So let's get into it. So the first thing is we pretty much covered it, but what is a stock order versus a custom order? A stock order is something that you always have on hand that is always available for order or it's always available just right in your storefront if you're running a commercial bakery. A custom order is something that generally takes more time and cannot be made on the spot and usually has to be ordered in advance. So as I previously mentioned, there are different ways to facilitate stock ordering. For example, if you're running a storefront, you're pretty much just going to have your cupcakes or your pastries or whatever it is that you normally have out in the open and people come and purchase that from you. But for somebody that's a home baker, obviously you don't have a storefront, so you're not making stock orders daily. So the other way that you actually facilitate a stock order is to just have it available for order at all times throughout the year, but you might be wondering, well, how does this differ from a custom order? Well, the stock order has very specific things in place. So let's say, for example, that I offer a chocolate drip cake as a stock order. Well, every single time that a customer orders it, it looks just like that. You don't get to customize the chocolates. You don't get to customize what that drip looks like. It always looks something like that. Now that we know what a stock order is, let's get into the very specifics of what it is that you should be offering. So we're going to break this down into two different categories. So the first category I'm going to talk about is low risk stock order items. So what is a low risk item or something that I would consider low risk? I'm talking about things that are going to have longevity in your freezer and things that you're going to be able to keep on hand without having a lot of waste. So things that I would keep on hand for stock orders would be things like cake pops. These are things that can be kept in your fridge or freezer for a long period of time and also things like macarons. So how I personally did stock orders for macarons would be I would make one batch of whatever flavor that I would like to feature for that month and I would just keep that on hand. Once the stock orders had run out, I would no longer offer them. That would be the stock order of the month. So that particular flavor would have no minimum orders. This is a big thing too, because when I did custom orders for macarons, for example, there would have to be minimum orders because I'm having to make a specific flavor. But this flavor has already been predetermined by myself and it's already there and it's already available. So there's no need to implement any minimums because it's not like I had to make it for something specific. Another reason why I would consider something like macarons very low risk is because let's say I got to the end of that month but I didn't sell all the macarons. Well, at my particular bakery, there was a lot of people that would order things that had macarons on them. They wanted macaron cakes. So these little things were easy to kind of pop on and I actually found that I didn't have a whole lot of leftover macarons at the end. You can also do something like a quick sale where you get rid of everything and all of your stock orders at the end of each month. And this of course would mean that you're giving away your product for a lot cheaper. The next items are what I would consider to be moderate to high risk. So something like cakes. Now I find that cakes like fridge cakes do really well when you have a bakery storefront. You have a selection of finite designs that your bakery completes and maybe you only put out a few cakes every weekend and however many cakes that you decide to put out that weekend, that is the finite amount and that's all you're gonna do. Even that being said though, if you don't end up selling off those cakes, which might have in turn made you a lot more money, if you don't sell them, you've now wasted that time of your either employees or of yourself 
making and icing that cake. And if it doesn't get sold, it's kind of one of those things that you can't refreeze or put back somewhere. You kind of have to just either eat it on your own time or give it to an employee. Now this is something that I feel home bakers have to be really careful about because you're not going to have cakes that are on display at all times. You can do things like flash sales, which is kind of similar to a stock order where you always have it on hand, but in general, you're probably not going to have cakes like that on hand at all times, not even on the weekends. It's very risky to kind of make cakes when there are no orders around, especially if you're a smaller home baking business. But like I mentioned previously, you can have particular designs that are stock that will be in turn cheaper because people can't customize them. Other moderate to high risk items is obviously things that include fresh cream, but of course, if you guys are under cottage law, you wouldn't have things like this anyway. I know that for myself, I didn't offer anything that had fresh cream at all, but if you're a bakery storefront, you might offer these things. And of course, this is kind of the downside of bakeries. It's really hard sometimes to determine how many people are gonna buy what. You wanna make enough, but not too much, and it is really hard to make sure that those cases look full. People want to see that those cases look look nice and full. So it is always a little bit trickier for actual bakery businesses because you have to gauge how much you're going to be able to output without having too much waste while still making that display look nice. Because as humans, when we see that there's only one or two things, we don't actually want to purchase them. We like it when we see things in copious amounts. It's kind of a little marketing rule. So how did I actually personally maintain stock orders at my bakery? Well, like I mentioned, I did do it with macarons and I occasionally did it with things like cake pops, but everything else I didn't really keep as a stock order. The reason that I put stock orders in a lot of my videos is for those of you that are actually watching for bakery storefronts, because in your bakery storefronts, like I said, for a fridge cake, you can actually offer those things. The other thing that I would do is I would do event-based stock orders. So what that means is, is when you kind of have a little bit of a deal going on or a little bit of a special going on. So for example, Mother's Day, Father's Day, big events where you know a lot of bakeries are going to become actually overwhelmed with the amount of customers that they have in their stores. This is a great opportunity for home bakers as well because you can offer things as pre-order but still stock. Again, meaning that you're making some Thing that looks like a particular thing all the time. You're not allowing people any customization. Therefore, that brings me to my next point. You're going to price your stock orders cheaper. Here's where we get into that high risk versus moderate versus low risk. The thing with doing things like specials on Father's Day or Mother's Day, let's take cookies for example. If you want to be quirky and fun and you want something that somebody else isn't doing, this is a great idea and can sometimes pay off super, super well. However, sometimes it can actually backfire and you've missed the mark completely on what it is that your clientele is looking for. So sometimes this can flip flop between being high risk and low risk. There really is no way to have it nailed every single time. So there's two things that you want to do in order to kind of make a safe space for yourself. One is you want to make sure that you're pricing effectively and two, you want to make sure that you're choosing items again that are not going to put you in the hole. For example, if you're having to go out and purchase very, very specific baskets or very, very specific decorating items that you know can only really be used for this order and maybe one or two other orders that you can think of, those are things that are a little bit more high risk. It might pay off for you in the long run. Maybe you hit the nail on the head and you made a bunch of baby Yodas for Valentine's Day and people are eating it up and are purchasing and pre-ordering from you left and right. But on the other hand, let's say you go out and you purchase all these things because as we know, if you're going to be ordering specialized things from Amazon, for example, that can take a while for things to get to you. So you have to kind of take the risk and order them or else they're not going to arrive in time. And you can't wait for people to just order from you. You have to kind of just take a risk. And so in that instance, you might lose out a little bit more. Now what I mean by pricing effectively, and this is a little bit tricky when it comes to stock orders, especially when you're doing kind of pre-order stock orders, you have to make sure that that price is attractive enough so that people want to purchase it, but what you're offering is special enough. Now I'm not going to get into the logistics of how to price things because I feel like on all of my videos, whenever I talk about stock versus custom orders, I try to really give you guys a good look at what the 
difference is between stock and custom orders. Now in terms of bakery storefronts, I find that it's a little bit easier sometimes when it comes to things like pre-orders because you're able to pump out a lot more because you actually have staff that are helping you. The other thing is a lot of the locals, especially if you're well established, will understand, oh, it's gonna get really busy in here on Valentine's Day, Father's Day, Mother's Day, whatever it is. So selling those pre-orders so that people can skip the line is very enticing for a lot of people. So I hope that gave you guys a little bit more insight into what a stock versus custom order is and maybe you're thinking about whether you should offer it or not. At the end of the day, it's completely your choice. But my final insights from it are that really stock orders are a great thing to have, especially when you want to keep busy and you want to keep the flow of your bakery going. But honestly, the bulk of my income was made from custom orders. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys.